split the blankets. Traveling separate, one of us might have a chance to get away. Which way are you heading? Into town. Boy, you touched in the head. I figured that's the last place they'll look. You could be right. Anyway, good luck. <laughs> up with them before they hit the water. But they've been here already. How long ago do you figure? Well, the tracks is fresh. But we'll still have to search both sides to find out where they come out. Me and Ab will cut across and head upstream. Harmon, you and Josh hunt this shore. Now, what makes you figure that they headed upstream? Well, if you head downstream, you hit Salem. Oh? Well, in that case, I reckon I'll just head on into town. Harmon, you sure get fool ideas. If I was being hunted, I wouldn't be about to go to town. No, I don't reckon you would, Lige. But that's because you ain't a thinking man like I am. I'll see you boys on back at the cabin. stuff here to satisfy nearly everybody in Boonesboro. Yes, indeed, Daniel. A regular omnium gatherum. A regular what? Oh, Jericho, have you forgotten your Latin again? Or would you prefer uh, Salmagundi, a uh, Gallimaufry, a uh, miscellany? Never mind, never mind. No matter what we call it, we still got to load it. Well, now, I've got a hunch it'd save time if you two fellows would run your errands while I do the load. All right, Daniel.
hold it right there. Now throw me that pig sticker real easy. I'm a nervous man and this gun's got a hair trigger. That's it. Looks like I've come along just in time, Sergeant. Use a fix in the spoil a $40 carcass. A $40 what? Ain't no use in you pretending innocent, Sergeant Blake. You know $40 is the going price. Did you say Sergeant Blake? There you go again, acting innocent. After I just got through telling you, ain't gonna do you no good. Here, put them leg irons on. You making both of us your prisoner? Well, now, ain't that generally what happens to deserters when the law catches up with them? Are you the law? Well, in a matter of speaking. Maybe you're a bounty hunter. You know, I never did like him, two words. I'd prefer that you looked upon me as Simon Harmon, law-abiding citizen, just to doing his patriotic duty as he sees fit. Now, hurry up, get them locked up. Do you mind Tell me where you're taking us? right back where you started from. The Continental Army at Fort Savage. These are the ones that's got the bankroll. All right, get on your feet. Move around a little bit. I want to see if them things is on tight. What makes you so sure you've got the right man? He got a description out on you. You're a little bit bigger than I figured you was. Oh, too bad they ain't a paying for you for the pound. I guess there's no use denying that I'm Sergeant Blake. Might have known I couldn't fool a smart man like yourself. I sure am right proud to hear you say that. Me being a man of Christian principles, it'd hurt me something terrible to think that you'd lie to me. And now here we stand around talking when we should be a traveling. Well, don't rush on my account. Oh, I can't say as I blame you, Sergeant, knowing what you got to look forward to. Ask Private Stone here. This is the second time I brung him in. A hundred lashes. One hundred lashes on the bareback. Ah, oh, no. That's just for him. They're gonna hang you, Sergeant. Why do me any special favors? You know that lieutenant that you hit when you run away? He died. Now, that's a real tragic thing, but it did up the going price on you from $40 to $500. Okay, boys, you got a long, hard walk ahead of you. Let's get going. Go on. You boys, just move along. I'll catch up with you directly. Sergeant Blake. Why didn't you tell him? He wouldn't have believed me. Besides, when we get to Fort Savage, I'll be recognized and set free. It's only 50 miles from here. You won't get me back to Fort Savage this time. A hundred lashes are better than taking a chance on having that body hunter shoot you. Maybe we could help each other. I want no help. You would promise that, but you would not keep that promise. That's happened too many times before. It won't happen again. You boys don't keep moving. We ain't ever gonna get there.
Jericho, where have you been? I've been waiting for you. I came as fast as I could. Where's Daniel? I thought he might be with you. No, I haven't seen him since I left. What's happened? Where's the wagon? I don't know. Uh, something must be wrong. I'd like Daniel to go driving off and leaving the supplies and not leaving word for us. Let's ask the shopkeeper. Oh, I already have. I've asked everybody. All I've been able to find out is that the wagon left in a hurry and the stranger was driving it. What happened to Daniel? I don't know. But I think we'd better find out. soldiers for a while. Well, we'll just rest here for a spell and then we'll see if we can't find our way around this mess. You never do that again, you hear me? I'm a peace-loving man, but you come awful close to getting me riled up. You wanted me to believe you'd help me. Why didn't you? Help you? You thought a shot to you pull a fool stunt like that, you'll get us both killed. We could have gotten away. These leg irons. Now I know you. You want me to help you, but only to save your own neck, not mine. You better listen to the sergeant, soldier. It's just lucky for you that I prefer bringing my prisoners in all in one piece, most of the time. I ain't like Lige. Who's Lige? Yeah, Lige Moody, my hunting partner. He ain't got a gentle disposition like I got. Well, I seen him and the boys kill a prisoner for a whole lot less than you just done. Just doing your patriotic duty. Now and then, why, we catch somebody, a spy or something, we can peddle up in Canada. You work for the British, too? <laughs> Man's got to keep busy, you know. Which side are you on, Harmon? Oh, I, I've been on both sides from time to time. I'll say one thing for the British, they sure pay off a lot better than the Army does. 100 pounds, 200, why, even more than that if a fella can lay his hands on the right party. Who would that be? Someone like Daniel Boone? Boone? <laughs> He's the biggest catch all. Why, if we can ever get a hold of Daniel Boone, you know how much he'd bring up in Canada? 500 pounds. It's all written here, Jericho. You see? The man stood by his horse here. Then he mounted and he moved on. The two men rolled down the slope and they stood approximately here. Now that's strange, very strange. Jericho, I believe we found the key. Or to be more precise, the lock. I'll follow you. This is the imprint of a chain and a set of manacles. Well, what's that got to do with Daniel? Well, Jericho, haven't you ever seen two men walking in leg irons chained to one another? See, they continued on here, 
The men on horseback follow. Well, it sounds like Daniel's being held prisoner, but why? I don't know. Who's the other prisoner, and, and who's the man on horseback? I don't know that either, but I think we'd better find out. What are you up to? Didn't I warn you? It's not his fault. He's half dead on his feet. There's nothing wrong with me. I can go on. Turn him loose, Sergeant. That's better. I get moving. Are you satisfied? The last time you had anything to eat. I don't need your help. Oh, take it easy. Got any food in those saddlebags? You better feed him if you expect to get to Fort Savage alive with him. Now, why didn't he tell me he's uh, feeling poorly? He might have died on me before I got him back to the fort. A dead deserter isn't worth much, eh, Harmon? Now, Sergeant, don't you go letting that information give you any ideas. I might be a greedy man sometimes, but I sure ain't gonna let that get in my way if it comes to the point where I have to shoot you. You know. There ain't no uh, discount on damaged goods. And I'll guarantee you that if I win you, it'll be in a place where it won't kill you. But it might smart a bit. You'll feel better after you have some grub. Here, give him that. Only way you can kill one of them half-breeds is cut his head off and hide it where he can't find it. I'll go get you a hat full of water. Now, don't you go running off on me, Shawnee. Shawnee. My mother was a Shawnee. Reuben Stone is my father's name. He was a fur trapper. The Wyandots killed him soon after I was born, and then they burned down the cabin my father had built. Did your mother raise you? With her people. She taught me the white man's ways. If she left her people, why did she take you back? Where else could she go? A squaw with her papoose. She had to go back to Seoto country. Tell me what else happened, Reuben. Tell me about the army. There was a girl. But she chose a full blood in preference to me. So I left the village. Could have been your first mistake. Where do you live when neither the white man nor the Indian wants you? I've got a friend that's handled that pretty well. But you still haven't told me about the army. I got drunk. When I woke up, I was in the army. I didn't remember signing on, but there was my name on the paper. Shanghai. I could have been with my mother's people now, but you had to stop me. Well, now, as I recall it, you laid me out and stole my wagon. Am I expected to say thank you kindly? You know the trouble with you, Reuben. You think everybody's your enemy. If I'd known back in Salem, I'd have helped you. If you had known, you would have helped me the way all white men have helped me. Well, we're not all alike, Reuben. We're not all Indian killers. You kill, you destroy, you lay waste the land. You kill more game than you can eat. Well, some do. I don't deny it. But not all of us. Oh, tell that to a child. I don't believe you. I trust no one. You and me agree on one thing, Shawnee. Don't trust nobody. Here, there's some water. That ought to put you on your feet. Now let's get moving. Come oh. on. There's no tracks here. It's just rock. Tell the truth, Mingo. We've lost Daniel's trail, haven't we? Oh, we'll find it. Don't worry. And all these rocks? 
Well, all along the trail, Daniel has left signs for us, but here in these rocks, we can't look for tracks. Look for a marker. Mingo, they were here. You see that? Good boy, Jericho. That's a piece of buckskin from Daniel's boot. You have sharp eyes. Probably would have missed it if you hadn't told me what to look for. Those rocks are impassable. They must have gone around. Hold it. Hold it, you two. Figuring on crossing here? You got any objections? Well, there's quicksand out yonder, Harmon. Now, you wouldn't be trying to scare me off of this river, would you? Now, why would I do that? Well, Sergeant, I've been watching you lately. You know, you've done everything but put up signs to try to mark our back trail. I think it's time we took to the water and see if we can't shake off any friends that you might have a following us. Well, I tell you, Harmon, there's quicksand out there. Sergeant, you know what? I think that you've gone back to your evil ways and took to lying to me again. But if you ain't, there's one sure way of finding out if I'm wrong. When I see you two are disappearing out yonder about midstream, I'm going to turn around and head back for sure. Now, you just get to wait. Get on in, boys. The water's fine. But you never paid me no mind. Now, Harmon. You've already cost me more than the $40 that you're going to bring. I'm going to lose money, but so help me, I'm going to kill you. Wait a minute. If you want money, I'll make a bargain with you. Now, what do you got to bargain with? Blake. What about him? His name isn't Blake. Uh what did he lie to me about that for? Because he's worth more money than Blake ever was. That's Daniel Boone. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Boone. Oh, boy. Lies and the boys is going to hoop and holler when they hear about this. <laughs> you know how much you're going to bring when we turn you over to the British in Quebec? Five hundred pounds! <laughs> <laughs> like your friend's been doing a little celebrating. Jethro! Look at you. Yeah, drunk it all. Think that we left you here to guard that jug so some dishonest person wouldn't steal it. Figured lies and the boys would be back here by now.
You must still be looking for that sergeant. How many more of them are there besides Jethro? Oh, you mean here? There's six of us all together. You share and share alike? Well, we're friends, ain't we? See, I'm dividing six into 500 pounds. I'm not counting the $40 I get from you. That would come to, uh... Let me see now, what would that be? I don't know. 80 some odd pounds. 80 pounds. Sure has a nice sound to it. 500 pounds sure sounds a lot nicer. Man could live quite a spell on that amount. Yes, sir, he sure could. On the other hand, if a man wanted to live high, 80 pounds wouldn't last long at all. Now, just what are you driving at, anyhow? I'm trying to figure out a way so you can keep most of that 500 pounds yourself. Now, what do you want to do me any favors for? Because I aim to ask a favor in return. Oh. You want me to double-cross my friends, don't you? That's it, isn't it? Well, now, they double-cross you, wouldn't they? That ain't the point. Lige should catch me a double-crossing him. He'd hunt me down like a hound dog hunting a possum. Harmon, how would he know? How would he know? Well, I'm supposed to meet him back here. Shoot, if I don't show up, why, he's going to start asking questions, and all he'd have to do is just backtrack me, and sooner or later he'd find out that I brought somebody in. Well, now, that's part of the idea I had. Now, Mr. Boone, you know, uh, I'm plum disappointed in you. Why, had you figured for being a straightforward, honest, upright man, and here you are trying to corrupt me. Why, that's enough to spoil a man's faith in human nature. Now, uh, just what is this here plan that you had? What about the favor I want from you? Well, you ask it, and I'll consider it. Let Reuben go free. Now, why would I want to do that? He's still worth $40 to me. You'll never be able to collect it. You can't take me into Fort Savage, and you don't want to take him all the way to Canada with you. You know, you might have a good point there. What's the rest of this idea of yours? I can always go back to being Sergeant Blake again. That way, you can say you're taking me into Fort Savage for the reward. And you'll only have to split part of the $500, and Lige will never know you've crossed him. You know, Mr. Boone, for an honest man, you sure got a dishonest mind. Is it a bargain? It's a bargain. Let's get these leg irons off. all over, and there is sign of him. Where's Harmon? I ain't seen him since he took off a of Salem. Oh, Raggy always was a greedy one. Why couldn't he just waited 15 minutes more instead of hurrying back here to cheat me out of all that money? It's too late to turn that breed loose now. Maybe not. Here comes Barney. You just get in here. Got here early, Lige. Decided to go out for some game. Well, get a fire going. I ain't had since morning. Has anybody seen Jethro? Inside, Josh. Said he's feeling poorly. Got another skinful, you mean. Just about the same side as Jethro. Keep your head down low. Pull the hat down over your eyes. Why are you doing this for me? I'm doing this for both of us. If I ever see you again, I'll explain it to you. Can you find your way back? I'm still part Indian. You two ain't trying to fox me, are you? Well, we're just agreeing on how to outfox Moody. Are you ready? I'm ready. Just walk easy to the other side. Good luck, kid. Hey! 
Get going. Jericho, patience is a virtue, and one that is well worth acquiring. Well, are we going to stay here, or are we going to help Daniel? We can't very well help Daniel by starting to travel in the wrong direction. We know that the men came here to the river. There was a struggle yonder in the trees, and they returned to the water. The trail is north. North is across the river, so let's cross the river. But I don't believe they crossed the river. I believe they took to the water just to hide their trail. And which way did they go? Well, the answer lies somewhere along this riverbank. Let's try upstream. Oh, Mr. Moon, I can't fathom you. That man stole your wagon, he lied about you, and then he crossed you to save his own hide, and here you are sticking up for him. Well. Reuben is a man born to trouble, Harmon. Part white, part Indian. Doesn't know rightly where he belongs or how to find out. I feel sorry for him. Well, that's purely a waste of time, because he ain't going to think one bit more of you for helping him get away. All right, uh, you ready to go out and meet Lige Moody, Sergeant Blake? Harmon, if we go out there now, they'll wonder why we didn't come out sooner. You're always thinking, ain't you, Mr. Boone? Well, I've been doing a little thinking, too. I think I figured out a way to keep that bounty money all for myself. You know, I ain't too anxious to go out there and talk to lies, either. I ain't the greatest liar in the world, uh, lying being again my principles the way it is. Why don't we just uh, settle down here and make ourselves comfortable? Be dark pretty quick. We ain't gonna have long to wait. I'll take it. Easy now. <laughs> sides of this river for four or five miles. Either they stayed in the water an awful long time or we're going in the wrong direction. I think we should go downstream. I don't know, Jericho. I just have a feeling. I think we should go a little further upstream. Five 
$540 on the hoof. And we had to go and let it get away from us. Maybe Harmon was right about them hidden in the town instead of hidden for the hills. Now, you know that don't make sense. Harmon didn't believe it either. He just figured it for an excuse to go into town and get drunk while we done all the work. He didn't have no money. Unless he's been holding out on us. Now, I don't find that too hard to believe. You know, there's times that I think Harmon ain't exactly honest. If he ain't up to something, why ain't he back here by now? Howdy, Lige. We were just talking about you, Harmon. Yeah, I'll bet you was. I bet you were saying a lot of harsh things about me, like maybe I wasn't trustworthy and such. What you got there? I got me $500. Boys, I want you to meet Sergeant Jed Blake, late of the Continental Army. He's just dying to re-enlist. Where'd you catch him? Up at Salem, like I said I would. There he was, just a marching down the street like an honest citizen. I seen him and I just... Well, you couldn't hardly miss seeing him, considering the size of him. Did you give me any trouble? Oh, only once. Pulled me off my horse and made me lose him. Oh, boy, I come awful close to shooting him. I was just a squeezing that trigger and then I says to myself, Harmon, you hadn't ought to do that. You go shooting that man, and you're going to be cheating your friends out of their share of the bounty money. So I, I just didn't do it. Harmon, I figure I had you wrong all along. I sure am proud to hear you say that, Lash. All right, Sergeant. Over there by that tree. I'm going to tie him up, and then after I get a little rest and bite deep while I'll run him on into Fort Savage and collect our money for him. You aim to take him in all alone? Well, uh, ain't no use in all of us. Uh, why lie? There you go. Thinking them bad things about me again. Well, it uh, ain't that we don't trust you. Well, I'm plumb ashamed of you and hurt, too. Why, if I was fixing to cheat you, would I come toting him back in here where you could see him? Well, no. Well, I was just trying to be kindly to you, trying to keep you from taking that long, hard trip. I'd take that long, hard trip any day for $500. Would you take a longer trip for more money? Like what? Now, what on earth is he a-talking about? I don't know, but it's got a very interesting sound. As you were saying, why don't you go ahead and tell him, Harlem? Well, uh, tell him what? I, I done told him all I know. Uh, why don't you tell him my name isn't Blake? That I'm not wanted by the Continental Army. I am wanted by the British. Why, you don't say. Well, if your name ain't Blake, what is it? Boone. Boone? Not Daniel Boone. That's correct. Why, why didn't you tell me that before instead of leading me to believe that you was that sergeant all this time? I got a notion he did tell you that before. Well, now, now, Lige, you can't believe a word that man says. Why, he's been lying to me all along. Well, I bet he's lying right now about him being Boone. He just wants us to go traipsing off up there to Canada where he's likely got some friends. That's it. Chances are he ain't lying, too. Tie him up beside Boone. Now, Lige, you got no call to do this. Allies, I'm your friend. Yeah. Let's uh, heat up this gun barrel. Come along. You sure got us in a heap of trouble. I don't figure I'm any worse off than I was before. Just goes to show you that you never should trust an honest man. I trusted you and you, you wound up biting the hand that feeds you. You just ain't got no character. Mm-hmm. I'll never know for the life of me why you done it. Well, that's very simple, Harmon. I've got you on my side now. It makes the odds four to two instead of five to one. 
Well, one of them's got to be lying. The question is, which one? That big fella's got an awful smart look about him. Like he wasn't worried much. He could be saying he's Boone just to keep us from taking him to Fort Savage. I'd sure hate to go all the way to Canada for nothing. Well, yeah. on the other hand, you can't believe nothing Harmon says. Come on. You even turn me loose, Lige? Now, what are you fixing to do, Lige? I'm fixing to hear you tell the truth for once. Oh, Lige, there's got to be a simpler way. Why, why, you couldn't believe me if I was a dime. But if you used to take that hot iron to this feller who claims he's Daniel Boone now. <laughs> Now, that ain't a bad idea. Lay it into him. Wait a minute. Oh, 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 what is that? something I don't think you'd understand. Why, well, it's enough to ruin a man's faith in human nature. Boy, don't you know that you ain't supposed to act like a human being while you're setting a bad example for every half-breed in Kentucky territory? 
Let me have that knife. Now, what are you aiming to do, Mr. Boone? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Boone. I always knowed that, that you was a kindly man, and you gotta admit that I treated you fairly, didn't I? Didn't I turn him loose when you asked me to? Out of the kindness of my heart, even though he was worth money to me? Now, didn't it, Mr. Boone? Oh, oh Mr. Boone, I always knowed that you couldn't bring yourself to do me harm. You just didn't have it in your heart to, to, to punish an innocent man. It's all yours, Reuben. The Chinese know many ways to torture. Now, Reuben, remember, I'm your friend. I turned you loose now, didn't I? Didn't I, Reuben? we do with him if we had him. Reuben, come up here and meet that friend I was telling you about. He's half English. Come over by the fire and get acquainted. Jerry Cole. Yeah. Muscle that freight pretty good, Reuben. We could use a man like you in Boonesboro. Would I be welcome in Boonesboro? Oh, you take Mingo here. He's been around a long time. Nobody shot him. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have the advantage over me, Reuben. You don't even look like an Indian. I don't know. I, I might just cause you more trouble. Well, if you do, we can always cash in. You're still worth $40 to us. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty old tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The rippinest, roarinest, fightinest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes, a big man.